Female genital mutilation can actually cause death. My name is Mehmeen Meftahi. I'm a registered psychotherapist practitioner, NLP Life Skills Coach, and I advocate against female genital mutilation, violence and oppression against women. FGM stands for Female Genital Mutilation, and this is the cutting and removal, whether part or full, of the female genital area. Female genital mutilation has a huge, extensive range of health implications. These can stem from anything from post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, flashbacks, um, infertility, dermoid cysts. When a woman becomes pregnant, they can have recollection, especially if they have to go into labour and they have to be recut. We never have been able to pinpoint a specific country on female genital mutilation. What we do know and what we can say is that it happens in Africa, it happens in the Middle East, it happens in Asia, it's predominantly in Somalia and Sudan and Egypt. It's literally across the board. Unfortunately, the practice of female genital mutilation here in the UK is quite high. Most people don't realise just how high this is. The latest figures have been estimated of 133,000 women are affected by FGM here in the UK. There are links between FGM and Islam. There are links with texts and references. This is something that we cannot deny. There has been mention whether it's via hadiths, weak hadiths or narrations or just texts in general that have connected FGM to Islam. Is FGM an Islamic practice? Without a doubt, it is not. There is nowhere in the Quran or the Sunnah that says it's an Islamic practice. When we consider female genital mutilation, especially if we consider type 3, now, type 3 female genital mutilation is the complete closure of the women's genitalia. Then she will be stitched completely and there will be just a small hole left for menstruation and urination. Let's consider that as type 3. That has absolutely no health benefits whatsoever to a woman. It's a harmful practice and has extensive issues. That's on one hand. Now if we look at the second part of this, the basic Islamic principle is from our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who has said, do not harm yourself or others. Put the two together and I can without a doubt say it is not an Islamic practice. What we also have to remember is that it's not coming from an Islamic practice, it's coming from the culture. We've always had an issue um, within Islam when we have culture versus Islam. Culture is deeply rooted and deeply ingrained and sometimes it's going to be hard to understand the differences between your culture and what is Islamic. So female genital mutilation is practiced within a number of faiths and it is across the board of all faiths. So though you may see this as happening within the Islamic faith, it is also happening from the faith of Christians and Catholics and even those of no religion. The Muslim community need to combat this issue. This is an issue that has been happening for a long time. This completely predates Islam. This is something that we have to address, we have to talk about, but most importantly, we have to educate. Now, what do we mean by education? Well, education on, does it stand within Islam? Is it an Islamic practice or is it a cultural practice? But what we have to understand and what we need to address is that within the Muslim community, it's a very, very sensitive topic. We cannot just attack a community. We cannot just say this is against um, what we believe. We have to understand it and we have to educate on it. Now, for many who practice this, they may not be aware how harmful the practice is. It comes from deep-rooted culture. If we have a belief in something and we truly believe that it's correct, it's very hard to change that mindset of belief. Female genital mutilation is an illegal practice here in the UK. It stands a prison sentence of up to 14 years. 
Unfortunately, what I also feel very strongly about is that by having a prison sentence of up to 14 years, how are you going to apply that? How are you going to then educate that elder or that circumciser as we know them to be, that grandmother or that mother may be make, doing this practice as a honour or a way of protecting their children. They do not necessarily know that one, it's illegal, or two, the implications of female genital mutilation. So we have to look at how do we tackle this? How do we combat this issue? Are we just imposing a law without actually educating our community? Therefore, yes, absolutely, we need that deterrent. Absolutely, across the board, it should be outlawed. But we need to put education into place first so that we can actually put an eradication to this practice. Research has shown from documentaries and from reports that those circumcisers once being educated on this particular topic, once they understand the implications of female genital mutilation, once they understand the detrimental effects it has on women, that it's not only against a women's rights and it's a violation, they actually start to become one of the greatest activists against female genital mutilation. FGM is a very complex, sensitive topic. It's a topic that needs to be addressed, it's a topic that we need to educate everybody on. But most importantly, it's something that we need to support. We need to support these women. We need to empower them and we need to give them the strength so that they know that no woman has to make a sacrifice for no one.